Alright, let's have a little different subject this time. This is a stepper motor. This is a stepper motor controller module I got off of eBay for 12 bucks. This is an Arduino Uno. This is a group of switches. In a lot of cases, if you're going to build a stepper motor controller, the price of these things work excellent. They are easy to hook up, connect up, and program. And we'll be looking at the connections, operation, and the Arduino program that I'm using to operate this. I'll demonstrate it real quick, and then we'll focus in and look closer at the individual components. Big deal, I press a switch. There it goes clockwise, press a switch, goes counterclockwise, press a third switch, and I actually lock the motor. There are things in the manual that are a bit iffy and questionable, and I'll clarify those. Let's zoom in a tad on the actual controller itself. Move over here. This is your actual controller. Has three input control connections: enable, pulse, and direction. It's for uh, it's a bi it's using a bipolar it's for bipolar stepper motors. This is the power input. In the case of my particular stepper motor here, let's move over just a bit. This is a unipolar stepper motor that I connected up to operate as a bipolar. I'll show you a little bit on that. Once again, and of course, here's the Arduino Uno. Very smooth, works really great, has current limiting, so, I'm not, so I can be broad and flexible with the power supplies. For 12 bucks, and you can get, and they, these modules are fairly inexpensive anyway. I'll be honest with you, it's cheaper to buy one of those than to try to build it, unless you have a reason to build it. All right, here's a blown up photograph of the TB6600 stepper motor driver. It's not very big, and the connections are simple. First of all, we have six input screws, that is in pairs, for enable, direction, and pulse. These inputs are completely optocoupler isolated. What that means, there is no electrical connection between the Arduino and the higher voltage circuitry. We have four connections here for your stepper motor windings. This is assuming a uh, bipolar stepper motor. Then we have two input pins for power. VCC should be plus VCC. And the voltage range is a minimum of 9 up to 40 volts. Also, off where you can't see them but labeled up here, are six switches, SW1 through SW6. And we will go over what those do a little closer, a little later in the video. Here are my connections to an Arduino. I'm using digital pins 5, 6, and 7. What I did is input pins on the controller is I tied the negative sides all together back to the ground on the Arduino. And then, uh, let's see, enable up here was connected to digital pin 7, direction to digital pin 5, and pulse was on digital pin 6. A high output will activate the controller and their normally programmed output low, except for enable, and I will explain why when I show you the Arduino programming. Here are your motor connections. B minus B plus, A minus A plus, ground and whatever. Remember VCC, this side is positive. Moving a little further down. Here's my Arduino. This is just my generic Arduino drawing. SW1 
1, 2, and 3 are connected to digital pins. 2, 3, and 4 programmed as inputs. Here are digital pins 5, 6, and 7. These illustrate here the internal optocoupler LEDs. You do not need any external resistors. It's just a direct connection. All right, this we're looking at the TB6600 factory manual. Again, of course, this is illustrating various connections for stepper motor windings. My stepper motor happened to be a unipolar stepper motor, but I connected it up as shown here with the center taps disconnected. Of course, here is your unipolar, uh, bipolar stepper motor and various other configurations and combinations. All right, let's look at the switches that I mentioned earlier, S1 through S6. S1, 2, and 3 set your st uh, stepper motor step angle. We're assuming a 1.8 degree motor that has 200 steps for 360 degrees. By changing these, and that's your base right there, by changing these switch combinations, you can microstep in one case for 360 degrees using a 1.8 degree motor if you set it for micro step 32 it would take 6400 step pulses to go 360 degrees and you can have 3200 1600 800 i'm not sure what they mean by 2 and a and b they're both 400 and the manual really doesn't say. I ran it in the video at 200. All right, also S4, 5, and 6 sets your peak current level. So this will control the current. And so you use these switch combinations of a peak of 0 0.51, 1.52, 2.5, 2.8, 3, and 3.5. It peaks out around 4 amps somewhere. I ran this at about 1 in this demonstration based on the motors that I had. So this is pretty good for limiting your current and thus I can use a wider range power supply. The unipolar stepper motor that I used in the demo was rated at 5 volts per winding in the unipolar mode. When I put them in series, it should have been 10. The power supply that I used happened to be 19 volts. So this is really a handy thing to have. All right, this is also taken from the manual. And you note something. This is an example for common anode connection. I didn't use common anode. But nonetheless, the manual keeps saying that enable is not connected. Uh, I'm going to dispute this because my test showed we ran into a problem. If enable is not connected, not only if it's not connected, if it is not kept high when you turn off the motor, that is if I don't turn enable on, guess what? The power stays on the motor all the time and the shaft is locked. Now, if you want that, that is fine, but I'm going to tell you just sitting there locked for a long period of time, that motor is going to get red hot. So when I, when I programmed this, I programmed it to be enabled only when I want it to move the motor or perhaps deliberately stop it. In my program, uh, I had a manual break on it or but normally I left it off when not running and you could turn the shaft freely. 